You want to make a NeoForge server? We're going to show you how to do that. And the first things first is you're going to need to download NeoForge itself. Now, not only will you need to have NeoForge installed locally, everyone who joins your server will need to have NeoForge installed as well. And you'll need to get the server files from the NeoForge installer too. So we really need to download it. And luckily, it's the second link in the description down below, which will take you here. This is our complete guide for getting NeoForge locally, which, like I said, you will need to do and we'll quickly cover in this guide. But you can send this to your friends and they'll be able to go ahead and get that process started while you're kind of getting the server set up and everything like that. So once you're here, go ahead and click Download NeoForge to go to the official download page. Now, the most recent version is going to be here, but if you want other versions, you can go to four other versions and click on this list, and then you can select other versions. For example, all the way back to 1.20.2, you can select here. We're going to go ahead, though, and do the most recent version. And to download it, it's a, it's a little weird. You have to go in the top right here, this little download button. And when you click on that, the download will begin. Now, while this is downloading, I want to mention that the server we're making here is not a 24-hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer's up and running. That's because it's using your own computer's resources and your own internet connection. Meaning, not only do you need a really good computer because modded servers are super resource intensive, you also need good internet because people are going to be joining your internet to join the server. On top of all of that, it's only meant for your friends and family because anyone who gets the IP address of the server we're starting in this video can do things like DDoS you, which is basically like hit your internet offline and figure out where you live down to latitude and longitude coordinates. So it's important you only give this to people you trust. However, what if you don't have to worry about any of those things? What if you don't want to have to worry about the computer hardware or your internet connection or security or who can play on the server? or any of that stuff. Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server for you and your friends. You can easily start a NeoForge server in just a few seconds and start adding mods to that server. Plus, let's say you add some mods to your server and for whatever reason, the server's not working. Well, there's expert live chat support there to help you out in scenarios exactly like that where your server's broken, your server's not starting for whatever reason, you've made a change or something. They're there to help fix the those changes and make sure your server gets online. And lastly, there are mod packs as well. You're starting a NeoForge server here. Let's say you wanted to play a mod pack like All the Mods 10 or Better Minecraft 5. Both of those are NeoForge mod packs. If you wanted to play one of those, it can be very complicated to get the server set up for them. But at Simple Game Hosting, it's just one click to start an All the Mods 10 server, a bit better Minecraft 5 server, and over 100 other mod packs with one click installation. So you won't have to struggle with that at all. Literally just click install, let it install on the server, and join it. That easy. So the easiest way to start a Minecraft server is Neoforge. It's definitely Simple Game Hosting. Go to the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple and start your Minecraft server the simple way. Nevertheless, we have our file downloaded here. So if you do still want to start a server using your computer, we're going to show you how let's jump into it we want to go ahead and minimize our browser and i'm going to create a new folder on our desktop so we can do a new folder here you can call this anything you want we'll call it neoforge server and then we want to go ahead and find the neoforge file we downloaded now for me that's going to be in my downloads folder here we can then go ahead and right click on the neoforge installer click on open with and click java it should then open but if you don't have java or it doesn't open like this what do you do? Well, in that case, we need to go ahead and get Java 21. Not only is Java 21 required for Minecraft mods, um, it's required for Minecraft servers too. So you better believe it's required for a modded server like a NeoForge server. This covers everything you need to know to get it up and running. And then after you've got Java, you'll also want to run the jar fix, which is just going to take the jar files on your computer like NeoForge and link them back to Java, making them what to work together. But first, get Java 21, then run the jar fix. And I say Java 21, this Java version may be different in the future. Let's Say you're watching this video for Minecraft 1.23, it may be a different version of Java, and that's okay. But whatever version is listed here is for the most recent version of Minecraft, is what it's compatible for. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and again, open up NeoForge, right click, open with java now at this point make sure minecraft and the minecraft launcher are closed and we want to install this locally like i said everyone who plays on the server including yourself needs this installed in their minecraft launcher and by clicking install client and clicking proceed that is exactly what we're doing once that's finished uh, this will automatically close so we'll have to reopen neoforge there we go so we install client profile neoforge we can click ok and like i said we're gonna have to reopen this because we also need the server files so right click open with java and it will open up the uh, neoforge installer again this time though we want to click on install server and this red box appears. In the red box, click the three dots and locate that NeoForge server folder you created. Right here it is for me, but yours, it might not be on your desktop. You might have put it somewhere else, but if it's on your desktop, right there it is, and click select. The red box will disappear, 
Then you want to make sure server starter jar is checked there. And once you've got server starter jar checked, install server is checked, and the red box has disappeared, you can click proceed, and it will now download all of these files. Now, this is all we need the installer for. You don't need it past this point to like actually run the server or anything like that. You just need it to get, well, to this point of downloading the server files, and of course, installing it in Minecraft, which we did first. Once it is successful, it'll tell you such successfully downloaded Minecraft server and installed NeoForge. Click OK, and now if we open up this NeoForge server folder, everything is here. Now, you may not have .bat at the end of this, and that's important because we need to make sure you're starting the right file. To make sure that's a scene, go ahead and click on View here, and then go down to Show, and then turn on File Name Extensions. For example, if I turn that off, these are just Run, but if we do View, Show, File, name extensions. There we go. We can now see the run.bat file there. And that's actually what we want to do is double click on that run.bat file. This is how you're going to start your server. The first time you start your server, it's going to fail though. Now as you can see, you need to agree to the Minecraft EULA in order to run the server. Press any key to continue. Let's do that. And now we have this EULA.txt file. Open that file up and assuming you agree to the Minecraft EULA here, which we do, change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. TRUE exactly like that. And then click file, save. Now we can go ahead and close out of this, double click that run.bat file again, and now your modded server is going to start. At this point, you can actually join this server, and that's exactly what we're going to do to make sure it's working. Now your friends can't join it right now, only you can, but we're going to quickly join it. So I'm going to go ahead, open up Minecraft with NeoForge. We want to make sure that we're playing Minecraft with our NeoForge installation here, not any of the other ones because those won't work. Then go ahead and click play, play again, Minecraft open with NeoForge, and our server is started. We can see done there, that means it's started. Once we're in game, I'll show you how to join this, and then we'll add some mods. Then I'll show you how to let your friends join and we'll be done. So here we are in game We can go ahead and click on multiplayer and click proceed and we want to then add this server So we can click add server here. You can name this anything you want I'm gonna name it local connection because it's a local connection to your NeoForge server Only you can join using this IP if anyone else tries it won't work And then the server address is gonna be local host all one word exactly like that local host Click done, after a few seconds it will resolve, and now we can go ahead and double click on local connection and your server will, will allow you in, you will join it, assuming you have NeoForge, and here we are in game, right? Things are working. I would suggest running around a bit at this point, because if your server is lagging right now, it is definitely going to lag when you add mods and your friends join and all that. So there's no reason to go through all of that setup process if you're lagging at this point, but we're generally good. The video may have had a little jump in it there, but that's just because we're recording as well. So overall, we are good to go. We can proceed. To do that, we want to disconnect from the server, go back and quit the game. We also want to stop the server, because to add mods to it, you need to restart the server. So it's best to just stop it and then start it after you've added the mods. To do that, come over here in the console and then type stop, right like so, without any slash or anything. Hit enter, and that's going to save everything. And then you're going to press any key, and it will close. Now, we need to get some NeoForge mods. What NeoForge mods, you might ask? Well, typically I used... Waystones for this. So that's what we're going to do this time. And you can find NeoForge mods on CurseForge and Moderinth. Both are great. There's one thing I want to show you here, and that is how to find dependency mods. Because if you try to play without dependency mods, things will break. It's not an if. They will. They just won't work. So how do we find that? Well, first, we need to go ahead and sort this for NeoForge and the version that we're playing Minecraft for. Then we want to find what we want to install, which in our case, like I said, is normally Waystones. Once you've clicked on Waystones, go ahead and click on Files up here at the top. And then we want to find the version again. So that's going to be the 1.21.5 in our case, whatever version you're playing, and then NeoForge. Here's the version we can install. If we click on it, we will be able to download it here. So we can go ahead and do that. We can start this download. But before we even do that, let's go to related projects because Balm is a required dependency. If you had just installed Waystones, you'd have been like, it's not working. It's not working. I don't know why it's not working. This is why it's not working. It's missing Balm. So we want to go ahead and open up Balm as well. And then we can download Waystones. Just like always in Minecraft mods, we need to keep or save it. And we can repeat this process with Balm here as well, going for the NeoForge version for the version we are installing and downloading it right like so. Now, if you go to related projects, Balm doesn't have any. That means you're good to install it. Nothing else is needed but Balm itself for Balm to work. There we go. That is now downloaded. I want to show you this on Moderinth as well. Again, you can search for your Minecraft version and NeoForge, and then you can find Waystones. I would use the same mod just to show you what it's like here. So if we go here, we can go to versions, and this time we want to find, again, that NeoForge version for 1.21.5 in our case, but again, whatever version you are installing NeoForge for. And then there it is, Dependencies Bomb. So that's how you can find them on Moderinth and how you can find them on CurseForge. I just wanted to make sure I outlined both because if you do not have a dependency mod, it will break things. 
your server won't work correctly. We can then go ahead and minimize this, and now we need to get this installed. So these are in my downloads folder. Let's move to the desktop just for ease of use, and by the way, you can delete this for its installer if you still have it, but to get these installed, we wanna install them in two places, because remember, anyone who joins your server needs NeoForge and every mod that you have on the server installed locally as well. So that means we need to do that for ourselves. Install it here on the server and in our .minecraft folder. To do that, open up your server first, go to mods here, and then we'll go ahead and move these in. Now, these are selected. I'm gonna go ahead and copy these using this button here because we're gonna paste them in our local mods folder. So let's go ahead and now open up Minecraft. You can also start the server at this point if you wanted, but I'm gonna wait until we add these mods to do that. Then we can navigate to installations at the top. Make sure modded is checked because if not, Neoforge isn't there. And there's your Neoforge installation. Hover over it and click the folder icon. Then you'll have a mods folder in here. Go ahead and right click in this folder and paste these. This should look exactly the same as your server's mods folder. So if I close this, nothing should change. Boom, there we go. That means it's working. So now we can go ahead, start the server and play Minecraft with NeoForge and our mods will be installed. Of course, I'll meet you in game just to prove that everything is in fact working. So here we are, we can join this just like any other server. If you wanted to check, we can see that Bomb and Waystones are both installed there. So we can then jump into multiplayer. We'll join that local connection yet again here because well, that's the same server. We'll see us join in. Most importantly though, we can op ourselves and give ourselves some Waystones. So if we come over here into the console, we can type op and then whatever your username is if you wanted to op yourself. And then we would see we made a server operator. What that allows us to do is do things like slash game mode creative and then very quickly and easily jump over and grab a Waystone. And uh, we can do one, and then we'll go ahead and grab a, another here. And this can be waystone number two. And then we'll be able to easily move between them by right-clicking. There we go. That moves us to one. That moves us to two. So Waystones is working. How do your friends join this server? You know what I have mods to? You know how to get the server up and running? Well, in order to do that, you will need to port forward. In the description below, we have an in-depth guide on port forwarding that covers absolutely everything everything that you need to know to port forward for your Minecraft server. It goes over everything start to finish and it will allow you to get your friends playing on your modded server. Down from how to find where port forwarding's out to how to actually port forward to eventually how to let them join using your public IP. It's all covered in this text guide but also in this video guide meaning that no matter which you prefer you will be able to use it to get your server port forwarded and allow your friends to join. Some other helpful stuff we have in the description is how to add more RAM to your server. So if you need to do that here's how you can do it. How to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. It's often that you'll port forward and then things will break and uh, you need to use this in order to uh, allow your friends to actually join after port forwarding. And then last but not least, how to fix a broken Minecraft server. This is our in-depth guide on fixing broken Minecraft servers. It's just me troubleshooting broken Minecraft servers for 20 minutes. And Minecraft servers can break for a lot of reasons, for a lot of different things. And this does cover modded servers as well. So go check it out because now that you're running a server, you'll probably have some issues and things may break occasionally. But nevertheless, with that being said, you now know how to make a NeoForge server. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Enjoy NeoForge. It's actually kind of cool, all the mods that are supporting NeoForge these days. And we'll see you in the next video. I'm out. Peace.